Hey guys, so this footage that you're about to see is literally from forever ago, like a really, really long time ago when we were just preparing for our transfer and I'm 23 and a half weeks pregnant right now. So this is old footage and I knew I had footage about like doing our progesterone shots and like my experience trying and like starting the progesterone for the first time, the progesterone oil and kind of like the tips and tricks and like little tools that we use to kind of make it easier, less painful, all that stuff. I knew I had had filmed something about that and I, whenever I was like editing all the TTC vlogs like forever ago I never ended up finding them and they, they never made their way into the vlogs I just found them so randomly on my computer so I figured I would still post this just because I do like feel like these tips are actually really really useful so there's a couple different products a couple just like different like tricks and techniques I guess in this video this like I said super old footage but still super relevant if you are doing an IVF transfer taking progesterone oil intramuscularly this will definitely help you of course like talk to your doctor and everything but most of these tips I got from my doctor and my nurses and other like IVF people that I've seen online or that I know so these are helpful tips <laughs> this is I know this video is coming up at a super random time and it's gonna seem like such a bizarre upload especially because I haven't uploaded like you know our journey TTC IVF footage in a while because I put that up when we like first got pregnant so this will hopefully be helpful sorry that it's so random it like starts randomly it ends randomly but I hope that this is gonna be helpful. I really think it will. I'll link all the products that I mentioned. A lot of them are from Amazon and stuff like that. I think this will help you. So definitely stay tuned. It's a pretty short video, but it's got some good tips in it. So <laughs> I know this is random, but I hope you enjoy. All right, we are officially starting our progesterone shots for our transfer, which is in like four, five days, something like that. This is our first time doing the progesterone and oil. We got mad needles. We got this giant one, and then, and then this smaller guy. This is obviously the actual stuff. Got our alcohol wipes, got our sharps container, all the things. And then these are some of the extra stuff. We have this heating pad for afterwards and then this little vibrating <laughs> ice pack situation that I'm also going to use. All right, we'll see how this goes. And this goes into like the side butt basically, kind of like this muscle here. So this will be interesting. Okay, so first impression of my first progesterone shot. It was really like not bad at all. <laughs> I feel like we maybe kind of like overhyped it in our head or just like heard. I just heard a lot of things is what it is that's like really painful and I'll give you just kind of a rundown of, of the experience. It just wasn't as bad as I feel like we made it out to be in our head. I think the main thing that kind of like sets you up to get freaked out is that this is in oil. So the progesterone is in oil. So it means that it's not super like viscous. It's not very like like liquidy. So it's a little bit hard going in and it can kind of kind of just create a lot of pain not going in not like the meta here that hurt going in but more like after the fact i think i might have mentioned this earlier a little bit but just to kind of give you like some of the tips and tricks that we got in advance and then obviously throughout this process i will be able to update you guys if i feel like they're working but i think there's some things that i can already tell you so the first tip is when you there's two at least for us there's two different needles there's like a huge needle that i showed just a second ago and that's what you use to just like draw out the liquid which thank goodness because that's a huge needle and i was a little nervous about that and then once you draw i don't do any of like the actual syringe action Ken does all of that and he administers it and I'm pretty much just lay there but you draw it out with that really really massive I'll show you you draw it out with this like gigantic needle like it's huge but <laughs> the good news is that's not the one that you actually get injected with the one you get injected with is just at least for me this baby guy I think this is a 22 gauge and that one's an 18 gauge something like that Ken was a little nervous about like administering it just because the last time when we did the HCG shot th that was really hard to get into the needle because there was like no liquid in the vial but this vial super full so it was no big deal at all use the big needle fill up the syringe pop the big needle off and then put the smaller needle on and then you're pretty much ready to go I took a little more prep work so what I did is I laid down like I showed you it's over here kind of in like your side but it's literally like almost exactly where your pocket would be or if you do kind of like a leg lift you can feel like exactly where that muscle is and it's a pretty big muscle my doctor does it there rather than like in the butt because I think a they said there's usually less fat in that area so if you're like more overweight it's easier to make sure that you're actually getting into the muscle rather than just like sticking it in like the fat layer and they said it's like a little less sensitive like it typically doesn't hurt as much like doing it in the thigh apparently hurts like crazy so I'm glad that we're not doing that but Ken basically just like puts his hand kind of on like your I think this is your femur they say on like the bone that kind of sticks out I can't do it but you do it like this basically 
imagine my hands all the way up right and you just kind of spread your fingers and you find the muscle kind of right here it's not that hard to find I kind of was like worried that we weren't gonna be able to locate the muscle but it was super easy to find and while he was like preparing it I use these little mini ice packs they actually came with that little buzzy bee thing it's just these little tiny ice packs they're really small and they have this little like slit here that just slips onto the clip on the buzzy bee so I think I showed this before but this is what the little device is it's from Amazon so I can link it up for y'all if you want to grab it it's definitely kind of pricey but I feel like for stuff like this it's definitely worth getting something that is gonna hopefully kind of help you so like I showed you it looks like this but it has this little clip here and you just slide that slit in the ice pack over this and I just held this I didn't turn it on yet when I was icing it I just held the little mini ice pack on this spot for maybe like five minutes my nurse was saying don't do it for too long because you don't want the muscle to be like really cold like all the way into the muscle you just want like kind of the injection site to be cold because like I said that's oil so it can kind of like not like congeal but you know it's just a little thicker so what Ken did to kind of counteract that and a tip that we got is once he filled the syringe he kind of just like held it just kind of like between his fingers like this just to kind of warm up the product a little bit just to make the oil a little bit easier to go in so that's why you don't want to ice the muscle too much because then warming up the oil kind of was for no reason and it just makes it even harder to get the oil actually into the muscle so I just held the ice pack on the spot for like five minutes and basically he warmed up the oil in the syringe for the same amount of time so the oil was a little warm and the injection site was like a little bit cold and a little bit numbed and then I took the ice pack off just did the alcohol wipe on the injection site it was really easy to find the injection site like I said it was no big deal and then I turned this on and sat it face down like obviously with the clip up kind of like maybe an inch above where he was going to inject it maybe two inches and just kind of sat it there and just kind of like held it with my hand and Ken did what was called it's the Z track method you can look it up online my nurse told me about it and it's basically where you pull the skin back a little bit from the injection site and hold it back kind of taut while you do the injection and then once you take it out you let the skin go and it basically allows the like hole the injection in your muscle the skin kind of covers it back up so that like the hole in your skin isn't directly above the hole in like your fat and your muscle if you can kind of get like in your mind what I'm describing the skin kind of like moves back over and covers the hole so the hole in the skin is like farther up and then the hole in the muscles covered up by the skin so you have to it's a little bit tricky to like kind of get the injection site and then pull it back and then make sure you're putting the needle in the right spot but the nurse said it's a good way to just make sure like you don't have a lot of bleeding and the medication doesn't like seep back out through the hole which did happen a little bit but I'll get there so basically I just held this near the injection site he pulled the skin back and I didn't feel anything and he was doing it for so long I'm like why are you taking so long and I guess just because it's oil it just like is really hard to like push out like to get it out of the syringe into the skin like it's just very slow moving so I felt like it was taking like forever so thank goodness it didn't actually hurt like while he was injecting it or while the needle was in there because it probably took like I don't know 20 seconds like it felt like it took a long time and then he just held it in there for like five seconds and then you just kind of quickly pull it out and then let the skin go so it covers it back up and then I took the alcohol wipe and just kind of like held the spot just like for a second and kind of like cleaned the area a little bit and then it says to massage the area like putting some pretty good pressure on it so I did that I just kind of like rubbed the area I kept the alcohol wipe on my finger and just kind of like really pushed pretty hard on the muscle and just went in like circular motions it says to put like a lot of pressure so I did and then I noticed after that though after I like just stopped rubbing it for a second and I was like looking at my phone a little tiny like droplet of blood and it looked like a little bit of medication like it was like a clear like watery substance so I don't know if it was a medication or maybe just like some <laughs> bodily fluid I don't know it did seem like there was a little bit kind of like bubbling over my skin like I think that's pretty normal and then after that I just had Ken heat up this heating pad this is also from Amazon I can link it it's really nice it had like these little gel beads and then this side is fleece so it's super super warm and really 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 soft and we just microwaved that for a little bit and then held that on the spot for a couple minutes after I was done massaging it and then I've also heard that it's good to kind of do some movements so like some squats or like lift your leg up and just kind of like get the muscle moving mainly because this because it's like in an oil and it's going into your muscle it can kind of like get stuck in the muscle and kind of like ball up and you can get kind of lumpy and the lumps don't feel very good like they're uncomfortable and kind of painful just like obviously you don't really want to just feel a bunch of lumps and I guess it kind of gets hard to find injection site spots because you just have so much bruising and so much lumps and it just like starts hurting more so I'm trying to do everything I can to avoid that which is basically like icing it well the icing it is more to help it not hurt which is also what this is for I don't know if I really explained that very 
well but doing the ice and using this are supposed to just keep it from hurting I guess the idea behind this is it kind of like distracts your brain having all this kind of like stimulation in that area that it's hard to recognize the pain of the injection when you have like this kind of vibration on the same like muscle I think that's the whole kind of concept behind it I feel like I didn't really explain that well so that's the purpose of this so I think between icing it and using that I mean I don't know if that's why it didn't hurt because like I didn't do this injection without doing those things but it didn't hurt at all so either it just doesn't hurt as much as people say or I'm just maybe a little bit more tolerant of the pain or the icing and the Buzzy Bee really helped because I literally felt nothing going in at all. And so now kind of the next step is to find out how much it hurts after the fact, which is also what you hear a lot about. So I'm hoping between massaging it, between heating it, and between kind of like, I was literally like just doing some squats. I'm hoping between like all of that, it will hopefully help keep the muscle like loose and not get really like I don't know, lumpy and painful. I also just did a glue workout this morning. I literally finished my workout with like one minute to spare to get this shot done. I kind of rushed a little bit, which was kind of annoying, but I feel like it maybe helped because that muscle, I was literally doing like leg lifts, like how I just demonstrated to you, like we were doing a bunch of these. So I feel like my muscle was super, super like warm and loose already. So I don't know if that also probably helped or not. I'm gonna have to stop working out soon, obviously once we do the transfer, but I'm still good to go for now. I feel like that could also probably be a trick to maybe just warm up the muscle a little bit, even though you're icing the injection site, kind of get the muscle warm. So maybe I'll do that too and just kind of do like some leg lifts and some squats on whatever side we're injecting it in to keep the muscle kind of like warm and ready to go. So yeah, I've heard that some people do these shots at night and I think those people, at least from what I've read, have more issues because I feel like once you do this and then you just lay down for eight hours, I feel like inevitably like it's the, the medication's just not gonna move as much because your muscle is not warm and it's just kind of stagnant I'm hoping the fact that we're doing it in the morning also helps because I'm just gonna be moving around like throughout the day and I can keep rubbing it throughout the day kind of keep the medication hopefully not like getting bunched up in there so anyway that's just like my first impression of the progesterone injection Ken also said it was like super easy and no big deal so he's like not worried or stressed out about it either the same for me it's like really quick and I mean there's just a lot of like prep before and after I feel like that's maybe like the most annoying part is that you have to lay down and ice it and like get the materials like the vibrating little bee and everything and then afterwards you have to rub it and heat it and squat so it's a little bit more involved in that regard but when it comes to like the actual injection it was kind of totally fine. So that was our first experience. We have to do this for at least like two more weeks. And then obviously, God willing, hoping that I'm pregnant, we do it for another, I think nine weeks after that. So this will probably be something that we get very, very accustomed to very quickly. There's also like a ton of materials like, our basket is just completely full again because I'm still taking estrogen which this morning was actually I think the way that this lined up was just kind of coincidental because this morning I had to take the shot of course I had to start the Z pack which this is just like an antibiotic that you take just like a couple days before the transfer just to like make sure you know you don't have anything going on I also had to replace my estrogen patch which is like right here on my stomach I had to replace my patch and I had to take my estrogen so I had to do the shot the estrogen pill the patch and the antibiotic all this morning so it just felt like I was like just doing a lot of medicated <laughs> things this morning I was standing over here like getting shots and then taking all these pills and replacing my patch and so you only have to do the patch every three days and the antibiotic is only for five days so it's just it's kind of like coincidental for it to all land on the same morning when usually it would be all kind of spread out so anyway this morning was just a lot but I'm not like freaked out I mean I honestly wasn't freaked out about it even beforehand which is like surprising like even last night and even this morning like when I was thinking about having to do it I was not worried I was not panicked I was not stressed out and if y'all know from the previous I'm sure like TTC clips and just knowing me in general anyone that knows me knows shots are like my worst fear and worst nightmare and I literally like get panic attacks thinking about having to do a shot or at least I used to and then we did IVF and now I literally like forget that I'm having shots and I literally don't even think about it having a shot to me is like taking a vitamin it's like just another thing at this point so I literally went from being my biggest fear literally like I couldn't even talk about it to now it doesn't even cross my mind <laughs> when I have to do it so big things happening in that department that's probably one of the best like outcomes of this whole IVF obviously hopefully when we have a baby that will be the best outcome but up until this point overcoming that like big stressor and fear and like mental block has been huge 
So anyway, this is an extremely long clip. Just wanted to give you all the down low. Thankfully, it is only a once a day, like once in the morning, and that's it. The alternative was doing it once every three days and then doing those vaginal progesterone suppositories, which I literally hated when we were doing IVF. They're awful. They're so annoying to have to put them in and then lay there for 15 minutes, and it's messy, and your cervix gets irritated, and it's bloody usually and there's a lot of discharge you can't have sex it's just disgusting so doing this super quick easy shot once a day versus doing that yeah i will take that any day and if you would have asked me a long time ago if i would be down to take shots every day over taking a shot every three days and doing something else i would have literally chose whatever the other thing was no matter what but now that i know how that is i'm so glad that we're just doing one shot a day no thank you also if you're like starting to think about doing ivf or anything if you can avoid doing the vaginal progesterone i would definitely <laughs> suggest it also just found a hack that makes this heating pad so good for so many reasons other than I mentioned I really like it but it's definitely better than a heated blanket or like one that you have to plug in because I literally just heat it up and then it's so tiny you can just tuck it into your leggings and just like walk around and you don't have to like use a hand to hold it you can be like hands free and just walk around and let it keep your muscle warm this is so great oh. 